You mentioned that caf- uh, coffee for you is a, a kryptonite, um, and I wasn't aware that ca- uh, chocolate has a small amount of caffeine. So I knew about theobromine, which is kind of like a related molecule. It's a it's a less potent stimulant, right? So are you saying even though you're very sensitive to coffee, you do just fine with your chocolate? Yes, thank goodness. Because if I if I didn't, I got you, you got to have something in life, right? If you take chocolate away from me too, geez, that would just not be fair. You have these different stimulants. You know, you have, for example, caffeine, which you find in in coffee and tea. You have matine, which you find in your mate. You have theobromine, which you find in chocolate. And theobromine is related to them. It is a stimulant to a degree, but it doesn't affect the nervous system in the same way as you get with caffeine. So it's much gentler. You know, people talk about getting a little stimulated from chocolate, but you never get a coffee level rush. Nobody's ever had, you know, coffee feelings from a bar of chocolate. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't affect the body in the same way. So it's much gentler. It's interesting because even though there is some in there, I do fine with it. There, there's a couple factors here, genetic factors for me. One is I have the COMT plus plus gene. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious to know whether you might have this as well. You, you seem like the type to have it. Do you? I do. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happens with this is that you don't produce uh, these methylation factors for catecholamines at the same rate as a normal person. What that means is you make dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, just like a normal person but you don't get rid of them at the same rate. So if you imagine if you continued producing, you know, filling up the trash can at the same rate in your house as you normally do, but you only took it out once, you know, every two weeks instead of every two days, well, now you're going to end up with a lot of trash around and it's going to be a real problem. So what happens when people like you and I consume caffeine is that it increases then our production of norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, And this makes us feel on top of the world. It really fires up the frontal lobes in your brain. So your ability to focus, your overall feelings of happiness, these are just through the roof and also your filter. So you're able to really be cognizant of what you do and don't say. For people like you and I, it's extraordinarily rare that you say, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Or, oh, did I say that out loud? That doesn't happen to us. Uh, Then, then, And that's just one of the great benefits and and. So there's a lot of blessings with this, but it's a double-edged sword because on the other hand, if you're having something like a lot of caffeine coming into your body or even a moderate amount, you build up these catecholamines in the frontal lobes and they become irritants to your nervous system because you can't get rid of them fast enough. So what happens for me, and it's a little bit different for everybody because there's other genes that get involved in this as well. But for me, I will feel on top of the world the day of drinking coffee. But then for four or five days afterwards, I actually feel really sad. And to a degree, having more coffee will keep that at bay, but it catches up with you and it can be quite rough. And that's for me is compounded by the fact that I am a slow metabolizer of caffeine. So I'm also not able to get rid of the caffeine fast enough. And so it stays around lingering longer in my system. And it then continues producing these catecholamines and I can't get rid of the catecholamines. So it's, it's a, Unfortunately, a combination that doesn't allow me to enjoy coffee, which would be lots of fun if I could, but you know, I get to have an unlimited amount of healthy chocolate for the rest of my life. So I'll I'll take what I can get. It's not too bad. (laughs) 